Okay, so we're going into my media closet right now. This is where I store all of my equipment for my home theater. Um, as you can see, there's lots of stuff. But here is the Aspire Revo home theater PC that I'm using. I brought my Wii along, uh, the Nintendo Wii, and I'm going to show you that so you can see uh, size-wise how it compares. The Revo doesn't have a DVD drive, so it's a lot thinner. Not quite as tall. Um, my Revo is on a stand. Um, as far as the weight, the Revo is a lot thinner too. That's the Wii with the slot drive. Um, I've already given you kind of a first look at this Aspire Revo, so you already know the ports and all the specs. 1.6 Atom dual core, 160 gig hard drive, 802.11n, gigabit Ethernet. Very good machine. Um, I've been using it for a while now, a couple weeks, and I'm very, very pleased with it. All right. So in a second, I'm going to take you back to my home theater, show you a couple of the things I'm doing with it in Windows 7 with the Media Center. And you'll be able to see it on the big screen and see how the video performs. And there's my server rack. And Okay, so we're going to fire up the projector now. I sped this up so you didn't have to wait through it. And it's booted up. There's the Revo. There is the Logitech uh, DeNovo Mini Bluetooth keyboard. That thing is awesome awesome love it all right so I've sped this little sequence up so I can get to the podcast video real quick I'm going to show you a video that's streaming off my server my HP uh, media smart server um, this is up a movie that just came out on DVD and this uh, this is a high def movie it's an mp4 format um, it's playing pretty good uh, it's kind of hard to get a feel for it that's a hundred inch screen that you're looking at um, but the video quality is excellent there's no stutters no skips um, the audio is awesome as well uh, I've got a 7.1 system and it it uh, matrix is that just fine it's all going over HDMI so I've got video and audio um, show you a real quick clip from Pixel Perfect, which is uh, a, dig, uh, a revision three show, and that seems to to do very well. Um, I just have my Media Smart server running iTunes, and it's every hour checking for new updates on shows that I like to watch. Uh, so here, this took a second to boot up. Um, it's a pretty big file, so it's bu buffering. Once it's buffered up, uh, you can see that it seems to play just fine. That there's one really big thing that's going to take about 24 hours to accomplish. And Bart Renoy's great if you like Photoshop. He's a great guy to watch. Okay. So, All right. Well, that's, that's going to be so windowed full screen, the video plays great. There's no issues at all with that. All right, so now I'm going to go into the Media Center functionality in Windows 7. If you've not gotten a chance to use Windows 7 yet, for a Media Center, it's awesome. Um, I don't yet have an infrared remote for mine, so um, I'm just using this Logitech DeNovo Mini. But the functionality in Windows Media Center uh, in 7 gives you a lot of plugins. Uh, on the left, there's a Netflix plugin, and that is a native plugin provided by Microsoft. Um, it's a little slow. Um, what happens when you first bring up the service is it has to refresh all the icons, but compared to the Xbox, the TiVo, and the PS3, uh, this is by far the, the nicest looking interface and the most usable and functional. Um, so I'm, I'm scrolling over here to new arrivals for movies. Uh, these are all movies that are available for instant streaming, and I'm just going to bring up Rocky II. Uh, I just happened to pick that one out. Um, it's going to take a second to load. And I left this in real time so you can see the delay. Um, once that gets loaded, uh, the video quality is good. It's full screen, 16 by 9. Um, and it doesn't really take that long to stream it, to start streaming. But as you can see, the icons are taking a long time to come up. Um, I don't really know if that's a problem or an issue with Netflix and taking a while to download those, or if it's the dual core Atom. Uh, having issues processing all those image files, but um, I haven't loaded it up in a while, so all these were new. 
So you can page through left or right. And uh, as you can see, the, the interface is pretty good. There's lots of icons for the movies. Uh, once you actually select one, it'll come up. You can look at a synopsis of the movie. You can see who's in it. Um, I was having trouble deciding which movie to show. Um, so, you know, as far as usability, I think this is probably the most usable because it replicates more of the website functionality that you'd get in Netflix. Okay, and you can get the synopsis, you can add it to your instant queue, you can add it to your DVD queue. Here I'm just selecting to play it, which is nice. Most of the other ones you have to add it to your instant queue first before you can play it. And that kind of sucks. Alright, so here it is. You know, about five or six seconds it starts streaming. Um, it's not HD video that I'm streaming here. It's just, uh, I don't know what, what it is, if it's 480p, but it, it doesn't look bad. Um, it's got a little icon that shows you that it's waiting for the server. Um, this is kind of typical. Xbox 360 does the same thing. Alright, so there's the movie streaming. Definitely not as quick as doing it on like a 360 instant stream or anything like that. Um, I skipped ahead so you could get an idea what the video quality looks like. It starts off a little jittery, it clears up after it's buffered. Alright, so I just stopped the Netflix. Um, it's going back to the main screen. Now I'm going to go and show you Hulu. And Hulu isn't a native plugin. They don't want you using it on Media Center. But someone's written a, a plugin for Hulu Desktop. And really what it does in the background is, and you'll see it, it launches um, a little batch file. And it starts Hulu in full screen. And then you can go in and you can actually um, start playing your, your show or whatever. Um, Hulu's kind of hit or miss, to be honest. It's, it's encoded, I believe, in, um, in Silverlight. If I'm not mistaken, it may be Flash. Either way, um, the uh, Dual Core Atom has a little problem uh, processing that right now and because it's all done in the, the CPU, not the GPU. Once that gets moved into the GPU, should be just as uh, just as great an experience as, uh, as what you saw with playing HD movies. And keep in mind, all this stuff is streaming. None of it's on the server. It's on the, the media smart... Yeah, I'm sorry, the home theater PC, it's on the Media Smart server, or in this case, it's remote. Alright, so I'm pulling up Family Guy. Watch this. Alright, I skipped through the commercial just for the sake of time. It's a Windows 7 commercial, yay. All right, and there it is streaming. This is 4x3 content, so it doesn't fill the whole screen. But the video quality is really good. And there's some nice overlays. And as you can see on the left, there's a buffer indicator, and the buffer was full. So now I switched it to high, to high for the video quality, and the buffer is really low. So it's stuttering, and it's, uh, it's not playing very well. And so I went ahead and paused it. And then once the buffer catches up, it plays just fine and high. Uh, really, I found that it depends on the content that you're watching as to how well it plays it. Um, but keep in mind, this is playing on a $320 machine. This isn't a you know a machine that has really high-end anything. Um, it's low power, low cost, uh, very small form factor. So um, I'm really impressed with it and. Uh, if you decide to try one out, this is basically the experience you're going to get right now until, until such time as they come out with an update. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, please hit me up in the comments or send me an email or listen to the simulcast at thesimulcast.com. Uh, I'll be giving some more updates the further along that I go. Thanks.